All right. Uh, thanks again for all of you for being here and uh, following Wake Forest football. It's a new opening statement, huh? <laughs> um, so we're, uh, we're looking forward to hosting Virginia this weekend, and uh, this is going to be a, a really important game for both teams. Uh, but I want to begin by thanking that this is the Gold Rush game to benefit uh, childhood cancer. Our Open the Gate honoree is, is Dr. Lindsay Thompson, uh, who's a, a professor and, and doctor at uh, Atrium Health, Wake Forest Baptist. And then uh, Lane Patrick was at our practice on Sunday, and he's a young man who'll serve as the honorary uh, coin toss. And our team had a chance to meet him and be around him and his family, which is always a, a rewarding experience. So it, I think it makes our players uh, appreciate their health and, and all the good fortune they have. Um, just wrapping up, uh, you know, North Carolina A and T. I mean, th those are our games that we're expected to win, and we're expected to win them in a certain way. And I think there were positives. You know, the positives is we're one and zero. I think after we got off to a slow start, we did some some pretty good things on offense. I was very happy with our red zone offense. You know, we struggled the year before against Elon, and that was kind of a, a sign of things to come for the year. So it was nice to see us get off to a, a good start in the red zone. We scored touchdowns down there on every drive except the two-minute drive. Um, and, you know, def defensively, you know, I thought we tightened down in the second half. Uh, clearly, there's a lot of things that we have to get better at. You know, we, we got off to a very slow start. I think on offense, we had too many missed opportunities for explosive plays. You know, there were really four post balls that I think were, were catchable balls that I would ex we need to make those plays. Uh, we had too many penalties. We didn't have four false starts. We just had the two, but we had a, a costly holding and uh, a crack back block. And uh, on defense, I'm really disappointed that we didn't defend the run better. Now, the positive is the ball didn't get over our head. We didn't give up explosive pass plays, but the, uh, the tackling and the run fits nearly, clearly need to get cleaned up. I thought overall our special teams were pretty good. Uh, we had the two penalties on the one play. Uh, but other than that, I thought Ivan punted the ball well. It was good to see Matt Dennis hit his kicks. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's, you like to be able to fix things after a win. Uh, but it was far from the clean game that we wanted to play. And we need to get better in a hurry um, with Virginia coming to town. You know, if you look at Virginia, you know, Coach Elliott's been there uh, now three years. He knows the ACC well coming from Clemson. And, you know, the first year, you know, they, they struggled and they had the tragedy that occurred and uh, didn't even end up finishing the season. And then last year they were three and nine, but a very competitive three and nine. They had five other games that they lost by a touchdown or less. And four of those games they lost by a field goal or less. So, again, if you look at their season, you know, they beat William & Mary. They had a good win over North Carolina. They had a good win over Duke, and those were two good football teams. And then an overtime loss to Miami and a bunch of games that they lost by one point, three points. And, you know, going through our, our program building here, I look back to like our, four, our, our 14 and 15 season, that in both years we won three games, but 15 we were much more competitive than we were in 14. And then we returned all these players that started to learn how to win. And I think Virginia's right at that point that they've got a ton of players back. They've got, you know, 16 starters back on offense and defense, their punters back, their place kickers back. Uh, their entire offensive line is back that started last year. They're very experienced. Uh, they've got some really good skill. Uh, the Fields is a, a really good player. He was their second leading receiver a year ago. He's 6'4", 220. Uh, they got a, a couple of transfers, one from Carolina, one from Kent State, uh, that have really made them better. They got Chris Tyree out of Notre Dame, who, you know, we did not want to kick to him a year ago. Uh, Kobe Pace is back as a tailback, who played three years at Clemson. Uh, they got a couple of transfers from Clemson and Harvard at tight end, and their quarterback makes them go. He is, Calandra is just... Uh, he, you know, he's one of those quarterbacks that you got to defend the play, and then if you defend the play, then you've got to defend 
the rest of it. And some of their biggest plays are just him scrambling around. Now they'll do a lot of design runs with him. You know, they'll run, uh, you know, they, they love the stretch play. They've got a great boot game that they formation you, they trade, they motion, and they create all different types of, you know, three level boots. And he's always a run threat. So it, it's tricky. You got to have your eyes in the right place. You've got to be able to have an inside quarterback player, an outside quarterback player. And even if you do that, he can make you miss. And defensively, they bring back a lot of good players too. You know, the two safeties, Sanker, who was an all ACC player, Clary, who's back from an injury. Those guys are excellent, excellent safeties in terms of getting the ball down on the ground. Uh, at corner, they really upgraded themselves in the transfer portal. You know, they got a player from Robert Morris, Eastern Michigan, Penn. Um, they got a, a guy from Akron who plays nickel for them. And most of their front is back. You know, they're, they're linebackers. Uh, you know, one was a, a freshman All-American last year. Uh, you know, the Cam Robinson, James Jackson was their second leading tackler a year ago. And they've got some good guys up front. Cam Bat Butler's back from injury. Jameer Carter. And, you know, I just view this as kind of like two similar teams that maybe didn't have the season they wanted a year ago. Uh, you know, we lost last year three games by five points or less. They lost four games by three points or less. We have 16 starters back on offense and defense and, and all that. They've got starters back. I just think this is a really, really big game for both football teams. So I'm glad we're home. Um, I have a lot of respect for Coach Elliott. We are both on the AFCA board together. Um, so we're, we're the two ACC representatives and you know, I think he's a, a man of integrity and um, cares about his players and is, is building the UVA program um, in a very good way. So, you know, I think they'll end up having a good season. Uh, we need to play well at home to make sure that that doesn't start for him here this Saturday. With that, I'll take questions. You know, the, the, you know, like we, we have now like 17 teams and all these different time zones and, you know, pre-existing contracts for out-of-conference games. I mean, I just, I would not want to be the ACC schedule maker. And, you know, to have a big game at home uh, the second weekend on national television. So if this game is, gets us more exposure, then that's a good thing. Yeah, so, um, you know, Hank's going to start this game. Um, we're still repping Hank and Michael with the ones. Um, we don't necessarily have a predetermined plan, but, um, you know, we'd, we'd like to get Michael in there. Um, after one game against an FCS team, I'm not ready to declare this over, uh, but, but Hank played really well. Um, when he was in there, I thought we got into a rhythm. And we had those two drives at the end of the half. And then we scored in every drive in the second half. And again, we wanted to get Michael back in there. But uh, that last drive that we scored on took a lot of time. And, you know, but we're going to need two quarterbacks. Um, but, you know, we made a decision based on last game that, you know, we're going to go with uh, Hank in a little bit of, in terms of how he moved the team. I don't necessarily think Michael played poorly. Um, but things maybe broke a little better for Hank, and he took advantage of it. Did anything when you're looking at film and diagnosing every play, did anything stand out to you about the way Hank played that you might not have been immediately rough, like immediately come to mind after the game? No, I just think a, a lot of his balls, like he hit guys in stride. You know, that the Taylor Marin play, um, you know, the, the play hit Walker Morell on, the play hit Donnie on. Like a lot of those plays, you know, were, were accurate throws that we got yards after the catch. Um, now, he had a little bit of a cleaner pocket overall than Michael did. But, again, he stepped up and made those throws. And, uh, you know, I mean, both guys did a good job of taking care of the football. I'm glad we didn't turn it over. You know, uh, 
I've been doing this a lot of years. I don't ever remember a game one that you tackled the way you wanted to. You know, and it, it Cam, it's always a little bit of that balance of, you know, how much tackling do you do in camp that you want to get your football team ready, but you don't want to end up down nine starters. And it's always a balance. And, you know, sometimes I look at, quite frankly, who the opening game is. And, you know, if you open with a Clemson or you open with a Florida State, you're probably going to tackle a lot more in camp. Um, you know, I ran the risk of we tackled and we probably tackled as much as, as we have the last two or three years, but I didn't overdo it. Again, just because we got to keep our guys healthy here. You know, last year at the end of the season, I mean, we, we were playing with a, a thin crew, and I didn't want to start the year thin. So, uh, you know, I was going to be a little bit on the, the risk-averse side of trying to keep our guys healthy and hoping that, you know, if we missed a few tackles game one, that we'd be able to survive it and find a way to win. And we'll be a better tackling team this week, I think, just because so many of those tackles were guys just game one jitters, just over pursuing things, um, not necessarily misfitting them, but just, you know, you, you play that game one and there's always those anxiety and jitters and, you know, you have those drops on the posts that those guys can make those plays 15 times over, but now the game is in front of fans with the score being kept on TV and, you know, it's the old analogy of the free throw, right? A guy can step there and practice, and it's the same shot 15 feet away, but, you know, you give him a one and one down one with two seconds left in the game with 15,000 people there, the percentage isn't the same. So I'm hoping that, you know, we just got some of the game speed. And we have guys that are good tacklers. That Now, Nick Anderson, he tackled really well. Like, he didn't have any, and why is that? Well, Nick's played a lot of football for us. So I think a lot of the guys that struggled with it were guys that were kind of either playing for the first time or playing the first time for Wake Forest. And, and I'm hoping, you know, you're never going to have a, a game that you, you don't miss tackles. But most games, if you can keep the missed tackles in single digits, you're probably going to be okay. But there's no question we had, we had too many. I mean, even last year when we played NC State, like he went out there and made plays, and I just think he he gets out there and he he played really well, and he did a great job on special teams too. Like if you watched him on the punt team, he was outstanding. Uh, if you watch the effort he made on the punt return, you know if you look if you watch that play, Connor, because I know you break down film, okay? But the you know you 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 saw the Demond Claiborne effort play. But then on the punt return, if you look at Deuce and Rashawn Tung, the two efforts that they made, and that's just his nature. And even last year, the NC State, if you remember the pick we threw on the two-point play, like he's the one guy that tried to trace it down. I just think his instinct is to go. Well, DeMond has matured in so many ways since he got here. He's matured as a football player. I think when he first got here, you'd say he was a really good running back with his hands on the ball. But the other part of the game, uh, the pass pro, uh, you, you know, the, the RPO stuff when he didn't get the ball. And now he's become really good at that. And, you know, we, we made a, a big point the night before the game of what, what do we want the identity of Wake Forest football to be? And when we've had our good teams, we've had those type of effort plays show up consistently. Like if you look at DeMond's play, we had a very similar play in 2017 with Arkeem Bird that we hit Tabari Hines against NC State. And Arkeem Bird came off the RPO and sprinted 50 yards down the field 
and had a block that if Tabari had kept his feet would have led to a touchdown. Um, you know, in the NC State game, we had the Demetrius Kemp play. Um, you know, we, in, against Florida State in 2018, the Justin Sternod play that he ran from behind and caused the strip and Demetrius Kemp then recovered the fumble. And we just said like, these are the type of plays that when people put on Wake Forest football, we want our effort to just scream off the film. And I challenge you guys to put as many of those plays on film as you possibly can. And we had them, the punt return, the demand play, uh, there was another play that they, they ran like a, a screen and the backside pursuit was exactly what you want it to be. And to me, that's just another sign that demand is all in. And when you put that play up for his teammates and his teammates see that type of effort, like how do you not want to block for that guy? Do you know what I'm saying? So I just think that's part of his evolution and maturity as a football player you know, that like a lot of skilled guys, they think it's about getting the ball and catching passes. And you hope at a certain point they figure out it's about team success and all the little things they can do. And he's gonna make plays. He's an extremely talented running back. and We know he's gonna make plays, but when a player of his ability makes an effort play like that, those are the goosebump moments for me. That there's a guy that is now, he, he's bought in. And if you're Taylor Marin, and you're going to run a perimeter run, now how do you not want to block for that guy that just made that effort play for you? And we had a lot of those on tape. I mean, I, I put four or five of them on to show the team in the, the Sunday meeting, but there was a lot more. We didn't have a hard time finding effort plays. Our third down defense was good. We were, I think, nine of 13. Um, so that was good. We, uh, again, you, you say, okay, let's not let the ball over our head and let's get off the field on third down. And we did those two things. And, you know, maybe at times we didn't commit enough guys to the box to stop the run, but we really felt that if we could just force them to snap the ball again. And we had some guys playing in the secondary for the first time. You know, and, and just we didn't want to give up double moves. You know, Jamari Glasker made his second start. Uh, Capone Blue, his first start for Wake Forest. Uh, Jackson Mull, uh, C.D. Kelly was out there and for the first time. And it's just like, don't try to do too much. Do your job. Count that your teammate is going to do his job. And that's how you play winning football. You have 11 guys on the same page. And so... You know, do we miss some tackles? Yeah, but, you know, those missed tackles resulted in eight and 10 yard plays. Usually those aren't the plays that are going to get you beat. Now, I mean, I'll, I'll say this, you know, A&T, they were, they're better and they've got some good skilled guys. I mean, the tailback's a good player. Those receivers are good. Their quarterback's a good player. Um, I'd be very surprised if they're not a lot more competitive in the CAA this year. Um, but again, you take the, uh, you know, you just take it and you try to get better from it. Hey, you said last week down was a little limited, albeit had a good performance in the game. Now he's a little bit stronger. But make the tape what you see from Donnie and how big of an addition to have him full go for the rest of that wide receiver. Well, the one play he made on the screen, I was so happy for him because you could just see when he scored how excited he was. And he's had a tough two years. And, you know, the, the takeaway from the game is your best players have to make plays. And for us, Taylor Marin, you know, Donovan Green, Damon Claiborne, Deuce, those four guys made plays. And they made dynamic plays. And now the challenge is, as the level of competition goes up, we need those same guys to make those same plays. And now it gets harder because Virginia will have a, a better defensive line. So the pocket will get tighter. We won't have as much time. Virginia will have a, a better secondary. So the, the coverage will be tighter. Um, the level of execution will have to get better against a better football team. But 
to have Donovan Green back is huge. Donovan Green, I mean, when, when he's right and he's 100% and he's locked in, he's as gifted and as talented as any receiver we've had here in my time. And that includes guys playing in the NFL. That's our plan moving forward, that we want to rotate the three guards. We're going to rotate the three tackles. Um, at some point, we'd like to give Luke a break, but we, are, we, we, want to play, we want to play seven, eight guys. And we'd like to do that all year. And if we can do that all year and we get to week eight, nine, and 10, and we're a little healthier and we're a little bit more of a fresh football team, um, that's going to that's gonna help us. Yeah, it's probably, uh, I'd say, still doubtful. We're, we're hoping to have him for Ole Miss. You mentioned being disappointed in not defending the run better, but for a ground game for Virginia with a running back like Cody Pace, the 93 yards last week, kind of how do you want to see this defense push this week? Well, we, we've got to fit runs better. When you play a, a team like Virginia with what they do, your eye discipline is really important. You know, with all their motions and different formations and their boot game and their zone read game, you know, what they'll do is they give you all this window dressing and then bang, they just hit the ball right down the middle and all of a sudden there's a 15 yard A gap run. And so, you know, having our, our, having good gap control, having our eyes in the right place and then down in the football is going to be really important this week. So, but yeah, they're, they've, Again, you, you look at them, they have 28 seniors or grad students, and they're too deep. You know, every year I break down, or every week, like how many juniors and seniors are they playing with, how many freshmen and sophomores. And, uh, you know, their, their breakdown is they've got 38 junior, seniors, and grad students, and nine sophomores and freshmen, and they're too deep. So this is an older football team. Uh, this is an O-line. Our first few years here, our O-line struggled. And they just played so much football together that they started becoming a really good O-line. And I think Virginia is right there. All these guys have played a lot of football together. And, you know, when you're going to run the ball, it starts with the group up front. And, and they're, a big, they're a big offensive line. I mean, all those guys are bigger than 300 pounds except one. So it starts up front, uh, but their backs, Pace, Greasy, Brown are all guys that can go. A two-minute timeout, <laughs> huh? It's a two minutes. I, I heard even uh, one of the ESPN announcers was told they weren't allowed to. Well, that's amazing to me. Like we we provide, we're basically a free farm system for them, <laughs> and we can't use two-minute warning when everybody in football knows it's a two-minute warning. So. Could you guys talk about managing the timeouts, maybe different? We, oh yeah, absolutely. It's uh, so I have a. a a friend who's an NFL head coach, and they have someone that they're basically devoted to doing this. And um, we were able to do a little, I was able to do a little clinic and text them back and forth of how to manage it. And it's different. It, it, how you manage the end of a game now is different because of the, the two minute timeout. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, it's, you know, when I walk up and down the, uh, the sideline, you'll see a guy behind me that has like all these plastic sheets with him. And a lot of those have to do, you know, I have the offensive game plan, the defensive game plan, the special teams game plan. Um, and a lot of it is, you know, clock management stuff that, you know, how to manage the end of the half, when to use a timeout at the end of the game, what if you're down one score, what if you're down two scores. Uh, there's a, it's a whole nother strategic element to it. And so for 24 years, I've been doing it one way and I've kind of had all these automatics, like even when you can take a knee at the end of the game is different now. You know, you used to be able to take a knee with, uh, you know, if a team had no timeouts and it was like, you know, 206, 208, you could just take three knees. Now you can't do that. Now you, you got to run a play. Um, and so... Yeah, I have somebody that helps me with it, but I also, for those last minute things, that sheet is right in front of me the whole time. I'm staring at that thing and, and you know, it also helps that our offensive coordinator now can communicate directly with the quarterback. 
So that I think that's been really helpful as well. Anything else, guys? All right. Thanks. Thanks.